Hi, this is Nell, illustrator slash animator slash generic creative, and now on my way to become a self-published author. Everything started over a decade ago. I fell hard for a guy who broke my heart and I vented my sorrow in a storytelling format, placing the story in a futuristic setting and thus creating yet another amateur signature story where the writer puts themselves in a fantasy world. And well, some of those stories have managed to become huge successes, putting yourself as a hero is not precisely an asset. Besides, while I am bitter at this guy for breaking my heart is a somewhat relatable story in your everyday coffee get-together anecdotes, it is not interesting enough for a book plot. So I regrowed the story. I made my character younger, more innocent and nicer than I actually am, and made the guy meaner than more evil than he actually is, to the point they are not ourselves anymore. I mentioned that it's kinda amateurish to put yourself in a fantasy setting and write about that. However, there is this very good advice about the storytelling from Pixar. Write about what you know. This is why Pixar movies are so great, because they feel genuine. You do relate to the hardships the characters are going through. It doesn't matter if they are toys, animals, or anthropomorphized emotions, their struggles hit close to home, because they are universal. And the writers and creators did a great job recreating them because they went through similar struggles themselves. They write about what they know. Bonus points if you nail down a character that has technical knowledge, people can actually call you out for it if it's poorly done. There is a reason why Mr. Robot is a way better show than any of the other shows depicting hackers. So, while putting yourself in a story is the safest way to write about what you know, you must be very careful not to become a Mary Sue, and instead do what the Pixar crew advises. Take situations you've experienced that have marked you and scatter them around the story. Following this advice, I took the my Latin American experience in first world countries to flesh out the social inequality in my now dystopian story. It is no longer circling around some girl's heartbreak. The heartbreak is now an element around two characters from two radically different worlds, caused by the irreconcilable differences each one carry, product of their own environment. The difference in mindset that go beyond what they can consciously control and what they learned from each other. Continuing with the right what you know advice, I brought characters loosely based on friends and people I know from real life. This way, every time I got stuck, I would think, what will this person do in this situation? And this helped me to keep on writing. What started in 2008 as a loose idea of a heartbreak story became the basis for a dystopian tale that kept integrating larger and more complex ideas, new characters, new settings, new plots, until it became something entirely different to the initial story. Up to that point, it was just a story in the back burner. I didn't really have any plans for it. I somewhat told the overall idea to some friends and all of them told me it was a good idea and I should do something with it. <laughs> Which, you know, I took with a grain of salt because, well, they are your friends, they want to see you succeed, so you are thankful for their support, but kinda no, it's not an accurate assessment of how good the idea actually is and itself. The moment when I thought, okay, maybe I'd got something good between my hands was when I had the good luck to meet this quite successful musician who actually integrated storytelling elements into his songs. And casually in conversation, I somewhat ended up telling him about my story. And after hearing what it was about, he asked me which TV show was it and where should he watch it because it sounded really good. I was like, uh, it's not a show, it's a story that I invented. And he was like, you came up with that? Then he moved seats to come closer to me and hear my story better, and, and that feel good. Another friend of mine from back then who was also a successful YouTuber told me, if you don't do anything with this in four years, I will. So that motivated me and I began structuring the idea in 2016. I was to think about a book back then, given my background I was thinking more of the lines of a comic, so I joined a local team from a local small editorial and wrote down the basic outline. After doing that, I realized it was going to be an insane amount of work, almost two years of a 9 to 5 working only on this with zero income, and that if everything worked out. 
I wasn't ready to take it on, so I just discarded the idea. I spent the next two years thinking it was just some naive dream, but the story kept popping up in my head. And finally, in 2018, I realized it didn't need to be a comic, it could be a book. So I started researching what I needed. There are basically two paths to take from here. Traditional publishing or self-publishing. For traditional publishing, you need to find an agent who specializes in your genre. They will read your manuscript and assess if it is publishing material. And if it is, they will negotiate a deal with an editorial in your behalf. If the editorial publishes it, you'll receive a payment plus royalties of the sales, which are around 5-25% to per book sold after you earn the editorial back the money of the payment they first made to you, while in self-publishing you get to keep all earnings for yourself. But you do everything yourself too. Promotion, sales, the cover, the editing, which can actually be an asset if you want to be in control of your book. Because in traditional publishing, the editorial chooses everything. They choose the cover and can ask you to delete chapters or change things on the story so the book gets more marketable. There is way more freedom in self-publishing. The downside is the insane amount of competition. Amazon Publishing made things so easy that everyone on their dog can publish a book if they so desire. So there is a lot of books on offer and yours can easily get lost in between so many titles available. However, even with traditional publishing, you face a similar challenge since editorials no longer invest in promoting their books unless they are a sure bet. So you also need to do your own promotion and the queues for agents to review your manuscripts can be very long especially if you are not a seasoned writer. Accounting from all this, I decided to go the self-publishing route. After reading plenty blogs, articles and watching YouTube testimonials, I found the first step was to, pretty obviously, sit down and write. I read my manuscript three times after finishing the first draft, modifying things here and there to make some parts clearer or to include ideas that came to me later on. Once I felt I had my first manuscript completed, it was time for the next step better readers. It is encouraged for you to get a couple of people to read your story so they can tell you if it is good, if it sucks, if there are parts they didn't get, etc. so you can fix the manuscript accordingly. The first thing I did was to ask friends of mine to do it, which was particularly challenging because very few of them are avid readers, and the ones who do read are more into non-fiction. So after getting six of them saying yes, but only one finding the time to actually fit my story in, I realized I was not doing things right. I needed better readers who actually were the type of reader who are into the type of story that I wrote. I mean, it's like invented a new formula for cat food and asking dog owners or people without pets if they think your cat food is okay. Given a lack of this type of reader in my immediate context, I turned to Fiverr and hired three of the readers there. After a couple of weeks, they finished their gigs and provided me with a report which helped me see how the story came across to others, so I made another edit to my manuscript integrating the feedback they provided. Once I had my newly fixed manuscript, the next step was to find an editor. Editors come in three main flavors, and ideally you need all three. The first is the developmental editor. They check how solid your storytelling and world building is, if your characters are rounded, if the overall structure of the story makes sense, and so on. Then make suggestions for you to modify the story, or cut on either characters or chapters, or anything they think will make it better. Next in line comes the copy editor. They check the manuscript for grammar and expressions, the way dialogues and descriptions are constructed, if they are easy to understand for the reader, if they fit with the tone of the scene, if it makes sense for a given character to use certain vocabulary, if the overall vocabulary is adequate for the intended reader, and so on. And the third one is the proofreader. They check exclusively for typos and errors in the book structure. They make sure that you don't mix an Oxford comma or a capital letter or misnumber a page. I didn't have enough money to get all three, so I prioritized and hired the copy, which was the type of editor I needed the most. He helped me to fix certain parts of the script that were not as intuitive as I thought, and suggested some changes on the story so I wouldn't get cancelled since I touch some prickly topics. I mean, it's a dystopia, one will think readers know what to expect, 
But there is always a person, so my editor helped me to make things more palatable in the event of said person. He also made questions regarding world building that I hadn't thought before how to justify, which forced me to put my creative gear to work, and his annotations made me realize some parts of the story needed to be reinforced, given the reader might miss some details that were there in the story, but not evidently enough, so they might get confused later on. I definitely recommend getting an editor. They help your story to become more robust. So, after months of back and forth working with him, I finally had my finished story. So, now the next steps are book design, publish, and promotion. I started researching that part and then I bump into a disheartening statistic. There are more books published than active readers. And nowadays, it is more down to marketing than anything else. You can have the best story in the world. If no one realizes it is there, it will remain unseen. And marketing is hard, expensive, and pretty much bad. I got discouraged once again, because 1. I'm not good at self-promo, 2. I have no money for a heavy marketing campaign, and 3. Odds for my first book to make it in an oversaturated market are really not in my favor. Then, 2020 roll in, we did the pandemia lockdown, with that other projects I was working on on the side overcomplicated my life, and my attention strayed away from the book once again. One day, back in high school, I was joining some friends to watch a soccer match between Mexico and Brazil. I called one of them to ask him if he was coming to see the match. No, he said, it is Brazil, it is the semi-final, we are going to lose. Besides, I find it a little bit sadistic of you to know beforehand Mexico is going to lose and still gather around to watch how it loses. I kind of feel like this about my book. I know the odds, I know how it is most likely going to end, and I kind of don't want to witness the show how it does. This is not a self-esteem issue, this is not something a you must believe in yourself speech can fix. I know myself, I have a pretty solid self-esteem, I am confident in my capabilities, this is something else. This is me looking at what it takes and realizing there are things outside of the scope of the things I can influence. So yeah, believing in myself won't cut it. So what I am doing instead is divorcing myself from the outcome. I promised myself that I will not continue until I could get into the mindset that, regardless how the book does, it is going to be okay. My reward is to finish the process, to get knowledge on how a book is done, and if I enjoy it, then use it to make another better. This way, if the book tanks, which most likely will, I won't end up depressed in a corner thinking I'm a failure, but up and running into the next thing, because Mental health is important, and this is my way to protect mine. So, ready for the next step, create the cover. I am currently midway into that process, so next video will be about that. Hope you find it useful when the time comes. Thank you for watching, and have a fantastic day. Everything started over a decade ago. I felt hard for a guy who broke my heart, and I've been... <gasps> Everything started over a decade ago. I feel hard for a guy. Who... <coughs> Everything started over a decade ago. I feel hard. For... <coughs> ay, ay, go. <coughs> Cállate. <coughs> Cállate. <coughs>